Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host and mad scientist, DT from WeatherRisk, uh, the commander of chaos, the colonel of confusion, the captain of catastrophe. we got a hurricane to talk about, and a pattern-changing event as well. So let's talk about This Week in Weather, and uh, obviously Hurricane Michael. So we'll start out here taking a look at the uh, satellite picture this afternoon. There's that beast kicking up now. It's definitely... Uh, uh, Strong Category 1 hurricane. The recon plane found pressure down to, what, 970, 975 recently. So it is definitely intensifying, and it is headed due north, and we'll see what the track. Now, here's the track from the Hurricane Center. This is the 4 o'clock advisory. They do make it to a Category 3 up to 105 knots, 120, 25 miles an hour before landfall, and then they hook it sharply to the right, as you can see, which takes it up into the Carolinas and to Virginia. Uh, so obviously that's of some concern. Uh, but uh, there are some things going on here which uh, make this a little difficult, a tricky forecast, uh, uh, and a lot of different aspects to this thing. So let's look at this carefully. Now, there is some shear going on here. I've enlarged the shear image so you can see it, and you can clearly see the uh, shear conditions here in this dark red area. You see this here? Dark. Let me change my marker so we can uh, follow it along a little better here. You can clearly see this shear area right in here, and all this red stuff is strong shear. So it is being somewhat sheared apart. Now, uh, the shear, it looks like it's going to weaken a little bit over the next 24 hours, and we can see that here a little bit um, as it moves north. But then the shear actually picks up a little bit along the Florida coast here. So uh, it may weaken a little bit before landfall. And also remember, as these things come north, they start, start suck, sucking in the dry air from off the land. So if the hurricane is here, the circulation is going to be pulling in the dry air from, uh, you know, from the Kentucky, Tennessee into the system. So that's one of the reasons why hurricanes fall apart when they approach slowly the Gulf Coast. We saw it with Opal in 1995 in October, which also hit the Florida Panhandle almost the same time as, as, the, as Michael's going to. So that's something to keep in mind here a little bit, I think. Um, that doesn't mean it's not going to intensify. It certainly is. But just when it approaches the Florida Panhandle. Now, this is the overall pattern here. We can see what's going on. <clears throat> here is our super ridge right here over the east coast okay now this little circle that represents michael this here's a monster trough over the west coast and of course the front is here we're getting our tremendous rains if you haven't looked at the radar recently you should take a look at the national radar you can see the rains and the thunderstorms pounding the bejesus out of texas and oklahoma eastern and central kansas missouri arkansas uh, missouri iowa minnesota wisconsin now by uh wednesday morning I right, the first piece of energy, there's another piece coming down here, but the first one's coming up this way. And that weakens the side of this a little bit. So here comes Michael, now, it, and it begins to turn north. Now here's Apalachicola. We'll see, because the ridge is still strong, uh, the models here have shifted west a little bit, and that's going to cause a little bit of uncertainty with the track on the landfall. Now by Thursday morning, there's Michael. You can see it over downtown Georgia, uh, right here. That's the upper air representation of it. And uh, the first short wave is pushed to the top of the ridge now flat. And there's another one down here in Vegas and California and Nevada. So th that's what's weakening the, 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 the ridge over the East Coast. is finally got this energy coming out of the Plain States, moving into the Great Lakes, upper Mississippi Valley. That weakens the ridge. I mean, uh, to, like I said, it weakens it here. And you can see it. And then it finally we get that solution. Now... This here is the uh, British model. I want to show you the difference here. The one on the left, this is the early morning, the 0Z run Monday. So 0Z Monday. And you can see, look where it is, east of Apalachicola. And then this is the 12Z run on Monday. And you can see it's now west of Apalachicola. So the, it's seeing the ridge here, and it's being pushed a little further to the west. And we'll see that in all the other models. Now, this is a comparison of the UKMET trend, 12Z, and the European model. Now, again, look, both of them take it west of Apalachicola, almost to Pensacola. Now, the British model has a little slower bend than the, than the European model. The European model has a faster bend here. And as a result, the British model takes it over Raleigh and then between Richmond and Norfolk and then over Wilds Island. The uh, European model on the right, you can see here, this is the European. Um, you can clearly see it takes it over Hatteras, south, uh, south of Norfolk, and then south of Raleigh. So there is some differences here. Uh, we can take a look at this, uh, the GFS here. This is the operational GFS, uh, and you can see 957 millibars on Wednesday morning making landfall uh, pretty much at or just the, close to uh, Pensacola. 
definitely to the west of Apalachicola and Blue Marker, as you can see that again. I just love saying the word Apalachicola, don't you? I mean, that's just a great word. So there's, Pens there's Appalachia, here's Pensacola over here. So somewhere around this area. And then you can see from there, a Wednesday evening, it then takes it um, up through central Georgia and then over Raleigh. And then as you can see here, and then finally um, between Norfolk and Richmond on the regular GFS. Now that's significantly further to the north than the uh, European model is showing, but it's close to what the British model is showing. Now, if it does this, of course, what happens is that means if you're on the coastal areas, you get a lot less wind. It means the system falls apart a lot faster, but it means more rain inland and less rain on the coast and also a weaker storm surge. So an inland track for the Carolinas and Virginia and Maryland Eastern Shore, that's pretty good in terms of the impact of it, uh, weakening the system really fast. It's worse if you're inland, but it's pretty good for the coastal areas. Now, this is the F3 the FV3 GFS, the new improved op GFS model, and you can see it follows kind of the same track. But here, notice in Virginia, instead of going um, over between Norfolk and Richmond here, it's actually up by Charlottesville and then up by Philadelphia, if you can believe that, north of D.C. Now, obviously, this would just be regular low pressure area. It would not have any tropical characteristics left at all. It would just be a big rainstorm, but it is further to the west and north because of the huge ridge here. Or oh, oh, in the upper levels of the atmosphere, which is you know forcing it to go around. So that's what's, that's the difference there. Let's take a look at the rainfall. This here is the GFS. Uh, again, this is the power, the, uh, the FV3 model. Notice that the rains are well uh, to the away from the coast here. Um, you, uh, Mark, you can see the rains here are well west of the coast. The coast is much drier here. All the rains in western northern Georgia, western Carolina, the Shenandoah Valley, southwest Virginia, up into Pennsylvania, Maryland, Hagerstown, that sort of thing. That's a viable solution. I can't rule that out, actually, because of the strength of the ridge off the southeast coast. Now, this here is the European model. This is the early morning. So this next one I'm going to show you. This is the early morning, so you can see the shift. Now, it's 947. This is early Monday morning, the 00 run. And it has it. This is valid Thursday morning at 8 AM. And you can see 947 millibars. Let me change marker so we can see this very nicely here. Uh, black marker. And you can see right there, 947 mill Apalachicola. OK, good. Uh, then from there, it takes it. Um, oops, clear this out. It takes it into Georgia on Thursday night at 8 p.m. as a, it's still a Category One hurricane, Southern Georgia, right over Tallahassee. This would be a direct hit for Tallahassee if this is right. This is right. This would not be very good news for those guys at all. And then up into coastal areas. Now it shifts it to the right. You see that over uh, just inland from Charleston. Now this would also be really bad for Hilton Head, for Savannah, the Bay Area, and coastal areas of Georgia. Uh, because you'd be getting uh, this sort of wind. Let me go back here one slide. You'd be getting a wind that was doing um, this. Oops. <laughs> be doing this. Putting wood in that direction. So that's what it would be doing if that were to happen. Okay. And then from there, um, you can see it goes over Wilmington back to the east again here a little bit uh, off the coast and well to the south and east of Hatteras and Norfolk and Richmond. This would not be a big deal for Virginia if this, were, if this track was correct. Now let's take a look at the 12 is a European run. Okay. Now here we can see that the run is it's got it further north because of the hurricane. I did not I don't think I posted that image. It's got it making landfall out by Appalachia uh, Pensacola now, and now it goes up in here. So that's central Georgia. That's a significant shift to the west. Actually, there's landfall, so I did have these maps out of sequence. You can see there it is by Pensacola, then it goes over Georgia, and then you can see now it's inland and north and west of uh, Wilmington, actually fairly close to Raleigh, maybe by Fayetteville, something like that. And that's a little further to the north. That's more wind for East North Carolina, more coastal surge, and so on and so forth. And of course, that's also, now it takes it north of Hatteras and over Elizabeth City, and this would be rain and wind for eastern and southeast Virginia a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit. And definitely, you can see the red colors there. That's uh, winds gusting up the hurricane force in Elizabeth City, the Pamlico, Abermall Sound, maybe Hatteras, Moorhead City. Gusts up to 70, 75 miles an hour on the coastal areas. Again, because Michael is so close to the coast on this track. And if we look at this in more detail, we can see uh, the winds here a little bit. And this enlargement of North Carolina and Virginia. See a little red area here? Okay, that's uh, winds gusting up this high. 
Obviously, you're much stronger over Hatteras in the open exposed areas. This is the low. This is the remains of Michael. Now, for Richmond, we're talking uh, south and east of Richmond, that green area, 34, 40, 36 knots. That's up to 40 miles an hour in gusts. Not out of the question. Chesapeake Bay up to 50 knots. Uh, uh, inland, uh, Suffolk, uh, Norfolk, uh, Newport News, gusting up to 50 knots, 55 miles an hour. Not out of the question. So, again, a decent-sized storm if it comes up north of Hatteras. That's the question. Uh, now, here's the European model solution. Now, look at the rainfall here. It's vastly different from what the uh, GFS was showing, if I could call the GFS rainfall map there. Very different, as you can see. Uh, because it's close to the coast, there you go. A lot of significant rain. Notice the rains drop off significantly once you go north of Richmond. And over here is Lynchburg. Over here is Roanoke. So all the rain is way south of this area. And then if we look at uh, uh, the anticipated storm tie, uh, when the winds might arrive, this is, again, this is the latest advisory here from the Hurricane Center. So it's showing that at uh, in, in central North Carolina, for example, the earliest likely time of winds gusting up to 39 miles an hour or higher would be Thursday morning at 8 a.m. You see that? And then in uh, southeast Virginia, Thursday, 8 p.m. Now, what are the odds? Of what's, that's the earliest they arrive. What's the per percentage chance of that? Well, if you look at it carefully, you can see, uh, I get my marker out here, that we got in this yellow area here, which is 30, 40% chance of seeing winds gusting up that high. Now, up to central north uh, Georgia, and you know, they're in the red area, that's 90%. Obviously, in Tallahassee, they're just going to get crushed down there. <clears throat> so you can see it's a pretty decent sized event here. Not the biggest East Coast hurricane, but not the worst either. Uh, the hurricane models don't show much change. The one on the left is the 0 z run from Monday, the 12 z run on the, on the right, and they're very similar. Not much change here at all. This here is the uh, operational GF, uh, Canadian model. Now, the Canadian model also, um, as you can see, uh, Pensacola, well to the west of Apalachicola, then um, very close to Tallahassee, and then it takes it uh, close central Georgia, uh, maybe um, close to Greensville, Spartanburg, you can believe that, and then well to the west of Raleigh. Um, I think that's way too far west. That's just, no, that's not going to happen. But there's the rain shield, you can see. Again, look at the rain. is away from the coast. There's no rain. All the rain is up in the mountains. And Shenandoah Valley, southwest Virginia, west of North Carolina, northwest uh, Georgia, and uh, South Carolina. So a significant difference there. I just think that solution is wrong. And then uh, if we look at the uh, GFS, the rainfall, uh, you can see that the regular GFS is pretty close to the European solution here. Not bad. Not pretty, pretty close here. I think that's right. It has a little more rain up into northern Virginia, Pennsylvania, which, you know, seems reasonable. Uh, so, you know, it's a very good. The issue, again, is where it crosses central North Carolina and what it does in central or southeastern Virginia, that sort of thing. <clears throat> so essentially, then we have two solutions here. We have the inland track. Landfall, Pensacola, goes up through central Georgia, near Columbia, South Carolina, central North Carolina, near Raleigh, Durham, and then passes between uh, Richmond and Norfolk, <clears throat> that sort of thing. That's very bad for Pensacola, Apalachicola, the Big Bend area of Florida to some degree, and uh, Tallahassee. This also would mean Michael falls apart really fast because it's way inland. That means less wind for the eastern side, the coastal areas, less wind for the coast, less storm surge for the coast in terms of any flooding, and much more rain, heavier rain inland as opposed to the coastal areas. So that's what the inland solution track does. All right, solution two, okay, I should say B on it, sorry about that. Huh. Uh, uh, but you can see this is the coastal track. And uh, you can see here, Apalachicola landfall, then it goes over Tallahassee, maybe a direct hit there. Southeastern Georgia, south coastal South Carolina, east North Carolina, and then south of Norfolk, but probably north of Hatteras. Now, this solution is very bad for Florida Big Bend area and for Apalachicola and for Tallahassee. Uh, it would mean that Michael holds the tropical storm all the way up the coast into a, east North Carolina. It would mean a lot more wind for the eastern side. It would mean a lot more storm surge for the coastal flooding. But it would mean a lot less wind inland uh, and a lot less rain inland as well. And it would, the western side of the system would fall apart completely as it pulls in all the dry air from the Midwest. So those are essentially our two different solutions here. We'll talk to another video or a podcast tomorrow about this, but that's what we're looking at here. And finally, beyond this, the big trough does come in. We get, do get the cool down. It does get very cold. Not very cold. It gets seasonally cold for mid-October, finally, for the Ohio Valley, for the Mid-Atlantic, for the Northeast. 
Again, you know, our normal daytime, normal temperatures are down into the uh, uh, upper 40s in many areas. That's normal, normal highs around 76, upper 60s. So if we get down to 45 degrees, 40 degrees in places in Virginia, North Carolina, that's not that unusual. It's just going to seem really unusual because it's been so warm. This is meteorologist DT from Weather Risk. I'll see you on the Facebook page and on the Twitter page.